Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, we are a minimalist family who is living big with less. And today, just for fun, I'm gonna spill the tea on some minimalist myths and misconceptions. So if you're curious about what's really true, stick around. Okay guys, so today I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about some minimalist myths or misconceptions that I've heard. Of course, this is just my experience and it's just for fun, but I thought it would be fun to just go through and talk a little bit about some of those things that maybe aren't true or are only partly true. So let's get straight to it. My first myth is about laundry. And I don't know if this gets me kicked out of the minimalist club or not, but let me tell you, I have heard many minimalists say that your laundry will be so much less or easier. And to an extent that's true, but unless you're going to forego wearing pants forever, you're still gonna have the same amount of laundry. And if you have children or if like me you have many children, you are gonna have a lot of laundry because your kids are still gonna wear clothes, they're still gonna get dirty and need to change. And in fact, if you're a minimalist, the turnaround on that laundry process is actually faster. So as it is definitely easier to put it away, it's definitely easier to pick stuff out, but as far as the actual laundry goes, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna call this one out and that it's not true. You're gonna have just as much laundry and you're probably gonna to need to do it faster. Okay, the second one is, this actually blew my mind because I had actually believed the myth until just recently. And that is that minimalists are not sentimental. So if you had asked me, are you a sentimental person? I probably would have said no. In fact, I know I could probably find you a video where I say, I'm not a very sentimental person, but this is actually not true. The meaning of sentimentality is a feeling of tenderness, sadness, or nostalgia. So it's it's a feeling, it's not actually holding on to things. So I am the first to cry over baby pictures. I talk with my sisters and my family all the time about memories I have of growing up. I absolutely love to hear other people in my family tell me stories. My grandparents and my great aunts and uncles is like my favorite thing because I am nostalgic. I love smells. I love songs. You name it, that's me. I am the chick crying over the song that I remember how I felt when I first heard it. I am the girl who turns around expecting to see my best friend just because I smelt her perfume. I am super sentimental, but I don't necessarily feel that I have to hold on to things to be sentimental. And if you do hold on to things because they're sentimental to you, that's absolutely fine. But do not believe the lie that you're not sentimental or that you're somehow really cold hearted because you don't want to keep every baby blanket, every dummy, every piece of your grandmother's china because you can still be sentimental, nostalgic, you can still feel all those feelings without holding on to the things. My third myth for you is that minimalists don't make messes. Let me tell you guys, have you ever given a toddler a cracker? one solitary cracker, let me tell you, they can make a giant mess with a very, very little. That is just how creative and inquisitive little people are. And so it doesn't matter if you have a house full of things or a really pared down home, kids will still find a way to make mess, housemates will still find a way to make mess, you're gonna bring guests into your home and they're gonna bring mess. So mess is by no means eliminated when you're a minimalist. I'm sorry guys, it's just the way it is. 
And that's okay because one of the best things about minimalism is that it's really quick to get it back to what it was and it's a lot faster process when you don't have all those excess things on the peripheral but by no means does it eliminate the mess and life is messy life is beautiful life is creative and we wouldn't want it any other way my fourth myth for you is that minimalists are bothered by your stuff now this one was a bit crazy for me to begin with because when i started making videos perhaps people who'd never been to my actual home before were like oh my gosh sarah you're never coming to my house and i was like what that's crazy and then as this journey has gone on i've had when i've gone to visit people they've been like Oh, we're so happy to see you. Don't go into the spare room. Don't open the garage. You would never want to see in there. And it's like, dude, I seriously do not mind how much stuff you have. You invite me for a coffee, I'm there. You need me to move stuff so I can sit down, no problem. You want me to just swipe that stuff to the end of your kitchen bench so we can have lunch there? Perfect, love it. It bothers me zero percent because at the end of the day i don't have to take care of it my husband explains it a bit like grandchildren like grandchildren are fun because you get to hand them back and it's somebody else's responsibility that's exactly how i feel coming into your home i can appreciate my friends who love decor and love abundance and enjoy my time in their home and then i get to go home and they get to maintain that they purchase the things that they love, they clean the things that they love, but it doesn't bother us 0% what you have in your home. If it makes you happy, it makes us happy. Do not be worried about that. Also guys, we're not judging you. We do not think that there's anything wrong with having things. I don't have a big freak out when I go to Kmart because I'm scared of the things. Nobody is judging you. We are not worried. You do you, we'll do us. If you want to minimize, let me know and I'll come and help you. But if you are happy, I'm happy. Okay, my fifth and final myth for you is a bit of a truth bomb. And that is that minimalism is not just a one step process. I hear from people all the time, I can't wait till I've gone through my whole house. And that is wonderful. And I'm sure you're gonna feel great when you've gotten through your whole house. But let me just reassure you that you are going to be decluttering forever. I am 10 years into this journey now. I've always been a good declutterer. The reality of our ever-changing lives is we're always gonna be decluttering. We're bringing new things in, we're going through new seasons in our lives. And those things are going to change and it's completely fine. But I would hate for you to go into this thinking you're just going to do it in one big blast and then it's going to be done forever because that's just simply not the case. Those little things are going to creep back in and over time, if you haven't kept up to that level, it's going to be cluttered again. So we can accept and the amount of stuff we have in our home at any one time is totally going to fluctuate depending on your kids needs, how many people you've got in your home at any given time, what you're doing and your work life, all of those things are all encompassing of how many things we need in our home at any one time. But just to make it real clear, you're going to be decluttering forever. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of fun and sheds a little bit of light on the truth about minimalism. Maybe spills the tea on some of those fallacies that the other minimalists might like you to believe. But I hope you guys let me know down in the comments what you think some minimalist myths are or any questions you have for me if you've been wondering if it's true or not. If you're new here, we would love to have you subscribe and join our community. Here are some videos we think you might like and I'll catch you guys in the next one.